Welcome to our new chapter. Um, notice this one's a big packet, so we're going to be in here for a while. Uh, the first part here is going to take us into a little bit of order of operations review, um, taking a look at solving some one-step equations. So order of operations is that PEMDAS, and I'm going to put M and D and A and S on the same lines. So we have parentheses, exponents. When we're left with multiply and divide, we work left to right. And left with add and subtracting stuff, we work left to right, whatever we come across first. So always look for parentheses. In this first one, we have that. Um, so 2 plus 1 is 3. Now it's important to realize that with this 5 squared bumped up to parentheses, there's a hiding multiplication inside there. We're going to start using the dot, especially in this chapter, um, because it's important for us to do that because we're going to start using x as a variable. So we took care of parentheses, exponents, which we have. 5 squared, remember that really means 5 times 5, so it's actually 25. And then we have multiply or divide, we do have multiplication. And the plus 3, which I keep bringing down, and that gives us a final answer of 78. Notice I'm trying to make that pizza slice here. Over here, no parentheses, but we do have exponents. 4 squared is 4 times 4 minus 2 times 3 plus 10. Multiply and divide, we do have multiplication. So 16 minus 6 plus 10. And we're left with add and subtract, so we work from left to right. 16 minus 6 is 10, plus 10, which gives us a final answer of 20. Okay. Um, the next part is a little bit about substitution, and it's really important for us to kind of know the difference between two different types of expressions. Numerical expressions has only numbers in them. And you're probably just hearing the word numerical. It kind of sounds like number. Um, it also has operations. So basically, the last two examples that we had up here, these are numerical expressions. They have numbers. They have operations in them. Algebraic expressions is a little bit new. We started to see that in the last chapter with the distributive property. These have variables and numbers, as well as having operations too. So the distributive property was a good example because if we ended up with an answer like this, this has variables, numbers, and the operations. So substitution is kind of important for us to be able to check our work um, in the next part of our chapter. So what we can do is we can actually substitute or plug in numbers for variables in an algebraic expression. So in this expression, 2 times the quantity n plus 3, if I tell you that n equals negative 4, it tells you go back to this expression and every time you see a negative 4, plug it in. So 2, parentheses, n, instead of n I'm putting in a negative 4, plus 3. Go ahead and treat it now since it's a numerical expression at this point. Just use PEMDAS. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Hiding multiplication here and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Over here, 8w minus 2v if w equals 5 and v equals 3. 8w really means 8 times w and 2 times v. So 8 times 5 because 5 is w minus 2 times 3, because v is 3. 8 times 5 is 40, minus 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and 40 minus 6 is 34. Flip it over. I'm going to take a second, pause the video, um, do example number 3, and then come back and check yourself. So in this one, you should have gotten 34 when you plugged in 8 for d. Example 4, I didn't have you work ahead. Here's our expression. And if you look at this first, first part, d over 4, over 4 really means we are dividing by 4. So we want if d is 8. So we're going to have 8 divided by 4 plus 3 times 8, because it's a d, minus 10. PEMDAS still applies. The first thing we come across is this division. 8 divided by 4 is 2 plus 3 times 8 minus 10 multiplication, and then we have add and subtract, so we go left to right, and we get 16 for our final answer. The next part goes into solving equations. Biggest thing you need to know for today is that addition and subtraction are going to undo each other. 
So in number one, when we're solving equations, our goal is to get the letter by itself. I like to say that letters are loners. So the letter over here is the R. With the R is stuck a plus four. And remember, just like in combining like terms, that plus goes with what comes after it. Since it's a plus four, I need to use a minus four to undo it in the process of getting the letter by itself. So I'm gonna put a minus four right underneath. This is an equation though, and you've probably used that scale balance when you were in elementary school. If you put one item on this side, you had to put the little weights over on this side so that it would actually stay balanced and you could figure out the weight of your object that you didn't know of. So with this one, if we do a minus four on the left side here, that's why we drew our line down, we also have to do it on the right side. Notice how I'm lining them up really nice and neat. Go ahead, draw a nice big line across the bottom to show that we're gonna clean some stuff up here. Since I have a minus four and a plus four, those are additive inverses, so when I actually take care of them, I get a big fat zero. So they really just go away, because I don't have to write r plus zero. So I can just write r. And over here, 10 minus 4 is 6. We just solved to find that r is 6. What I could do, since I had r plus 4 equals 10, I could plug in 6 for r, and I should get a true statement. 6 plus 4 is 10 and 10 equals 10. That's called a check. Number two, go ahead and drop a line. There's my letter. The minus five is stuck to it, so I'm going to do a plus five. 